up everybody? So we're out in the shop and today we're going to be working on the Kukri build. Now, when it comes to this day's process, my goal is to get the knife uh, through its second round of normalizing. So I normalized it after I forged it and then I always wait until I get a lot of the work done on it right before heat treat and I'll go through and normalize it again and then we'll go into heat treat. So today's going to be normalizing and then getting some of the scale off before we go into heat treat because I don't want that to be on there as a barrier. Uh, so we're going to normalize, clean up the knife, then we're going to heat treat, we're gonna clean up the knife again, then we're going to temper, then we're going to go ahead and I, I don't know exactly what we're going to do after that. Uh, I don't know what finish I'm going to put on this knife just yet, so we're going to kind of wing that process. Um, I will tell y'all, uh, having a plan going into a knife build is absolutely amazing. You, you especially need to have a plan if you're trying to recreate a knife for a customer for a specific way that they want that knife made. But if you're just making a knife for the sake of making a knife, you get a lot of free, just do whatever you want on the knife. And with this one, because this knife is for me, I, you know, I kind of want to just have fun with this. And as we go along, kind of figure out what I want to do with it and what I think looks good. You know, I do that on a lot of the knives that I make for the channel. I'll have a plan and they'll tend to come out pretty close to that plan. But as I'm going through the process, you know, I'll see it and I'll go, man, I want to acid etch this, or man, I want to polish this, or man, I want to sand this. And then I just end up going through that process as we're making the knife. And this build series is going to be no different. You know, I've got a lot of things that I want to try out on this knife. So we're going to end up doing that on this knife. Now, what finish we're going to end up with, I don't know. But let's jump into this. Let's get this process started. Let's get it. So what we're going to do is we're going to start this off with normalizing. And I've already done a normalizing session that was bringing it up to pass non-magnetic. This is just at non-magnetic. Then we close the forge off for about five minutes. Then we open the forge up for about 15 minutes. And then I take it out of the forge and put it aside and let it finish cool in, in air temperature. Now, what we're doing here is we're going to go ahead and clean off all the scale that happens from the normalizing process and that's purely just using one of my resurfacing belts that I have here but I want to hit on the normalizing process again so whenever I do the first step of normalizing that's whenever I do the non-magnetic and I do that right after the forge process and this right here was just purely to get another round of normalizing but a little bit cooler and then it's not like annealing it where you leave it in the forge the whole time. That was just purely normalizing it to refine that grain structure. Now we're going to go ahead and do the heat treat process. And on this one, we were bringing it past non-magnetic. So we go to non-magnetic and then go about 200 degrees past that and then I'm going to go ahead and quench this in peanut oil that has been heated to 120 degrees. You don't want it to be room temperature because if it is, it cools slower. If it is at 120 degrees to 130 degrees, it actually quenches faster because it is thinner. And uh, so it's just something to think about there whenever you're going to quench in any of your oils. And different oils have different temperatures that they need to be heated to. Now, as you can see here, it is definitely hard. It takes a file amazingly. All right, so I'm gonna pause for a second because I wanna show this off. So this is just what it looks like with it coming fresh out of the heat treat. So you can see the finish that's on it. You can see all of the you know, the marks from the forging process inside that area. I was looking at this going, you know, <laughs> your, your traditional, I say traditional, like your more things like whenever you Google Kukri, whenever you look that up, you're going to see a bunch of high polished knives. 
uh, a lot of them are maybe like a brush finish or satin finish all the way up to a high polish finish and that is going to be the bulk of what you see you know what I, I, I never see anything that's finished like this I know that I had kind of a, a, a thought process in mind prior to doing this but I really like this dark blade like that now of course we're not gonna leave it like this because we need to do a, a lot more sanding and finish work and things like that and then we're gonna go ahead and acid etch it but if I can acid etch and get close to that type of finish on there I'm definitely gonna be doing that because the scales that I'm going with are a lighter color wood they're actually right there with that liner this is what's going to make up the scales. You can't see them up close yet because they're a surprise. So, and I don't think you can zoom into that. Just know that it's going to have a nice contrasting finish. And I really like this. So let's go ahead, keep doing this video and see how this turns out whenever we get to that point. So let's get it. So right here, we're going to go ahead and take our 100 grit belt and take all of the decarb and some of the forge scale off of the knife. We want it to be at a point to where we can eventually start hand sanding, which I'm not a huge fan of, but we've got to hand sand with this blade. Uh, now, all I'm focusing on right here is getting the bevels really nice, clean, and straight. Now, you have to be careful whenever you're doing this step because you can easily mess up your bevels if you're not focusing on keeping everything flat and where you want it. Uh, a lot of people get to this point and they're ready to wrap this up so they start rushing. Don't do that. You definitely want to take your time to keep everything nice and clean. As you can see it just right there. You want to keep all of your bevels and your grind lines nice and smooth. So it's all about taking your time and doing everything the way that you need to do it. I do like the way the two-tone looks on this. It does look pretty awesome, but we'll talk about a few things later. Now it's time to go ahead and use our medium scotch Brite belt that we have and just start putting a little bit better finish on the knife before I start hand sanding so that I have less things to sand out. You want to be careful whenever you're using one of these belts because you can make your crisp lines round over and get rid of those sharp edges. You don't want to do that with this. You want to make sure everything stays nice and crisp. And what I'm going to be using on here is a sanding block that is hard foam on one side, soft foam on the other. This comes in a bigger block that I cut down, but I'm using the firmer of the foam. So it's not me using a metal rod because with how much curve and how I change the bevels on this, you can't use a solid, you know, hard backer on it. You gotta use something that has a little bit of flex to it. But there's a portion of the three hours of sanding that I did. All right, guys, let's go ahead and wrap up today's vlog. I want to get y'all's opinion on something. Now, you know, I took that little break in the video and kind of showed y'all how the knife looked whenever it was all dark after the heat treat. And I want y'all to remember that image. Let's see if you can see it right here. That. That right there. Now. I want to get y'all's opinion. Do you think I should go ahead and acid etch and leave it dark? Or do you think I should do it as it is right here? So it's not exactly a mirror polish. It's 
it's almost like a, a brushed look because we just went up to 500 grit on it but that turned out really nice so I want to get y'all's opinion on whether y'all think I should leave it like this or go ahead and acid etch it now the whole reason behind doing the hand sanding which y'all know for a fact is not my favorite thing to do I don't do it very often anymore but for the finish that I wanted to get after the etch on this we needed to at least sand this to 500 grit uh, because I want a really nice acid etch finish on the knife so that's why I went ahead and hand sanded it but I want to get y'all's opinion I want y'all to know or I want to know whether y'all think I should go ahead and leave it that brush look or if you think I should go ahead and acid etch it and get the whole blade dark because what's going to end up happening is when I get the whole blade dark and I sharpen this edge, that edge is going to stand out like a son of a gun. And uh, what will probably end up happening is we'll do the edge and then I'll go ahead and do just the upper bevel, sand it. So the blade, the bulk of the blade and everything will be dark, but this top piece right here will be satin finished like that and then the whole entire edge will be you know the finish that I typically have on my edges and then everything else will be dark I want y'all's opinion on that primarily because we're going to be using these scales that are right here and they're a lighter wood so I wanted the contrast and everything with the dark blade and the lighter wood you know I can always go with dark handle scales and do a lighter blade like it is right now but I want y'all's opinion on whether y'all think I should leave it that nice hand sanded finish like it is and talk about look at these plunge lines right here do you see that look how smooth those guys are I mean that is just that is just nice anyways uh what do y'all think sanded finish with like a dark set of handle scales or acid etch with a light set of handle scales I want to know your opinion. Tell me, comment section below. Now, that is the end of this video. If y'all would, give this video a thumbs up, share this video or one of my other videos. And guys, if you haven't yet, bottom corner, hit that subscribe button, not the scales. Don't, 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 don't touch those. The subscribe button. Go ahead and do that. Turn on the notification bell so you get notified of the stuff that we have that's coming up. Guys, thank y'all for coming by. Thank y'all for spending your time with me. Y'all have an amazing day. Y'all stay safe out there. I'll catch y'all next time.